Well, it was an uh, amazing incident yesterday afternoon between Fabian Coulthard and Garth Tanner. We've got Fabian Coulthard in here with the Hino Hub with us. We're just going to run through a little bit of the, uh, the, the uh, video that we got from yesterday, a few replays. But Fabian, first up, amazing to have the number 12 back here at the track and hopefully out there for the race today. What a job by your guys. Yeah, the boys haven't had much sleep, so uh, I'm very thankful for them. You know, they've done a, a lot of hard work overnight. It was a huge incident. We're just going to have a bit of a look now at uh, the replay from that. And where it all started was down at the last tournament coming onto the straight and GT giving a bit of a rubber. Yeah, that's uh, sort of what gave GD, uh, GT the potential to have any form of overlap. And we know within the driving conduct, that's a big no-no. Um, but yeah, that's how we got alongside me. You know, and the, then we see that, that, that little overlap. Now, I mean, it looks to me like an almost misjudgment there on his part, potentially. I mean, this is the impact, the, the amount of damage done to your car. But obviously, there's a few other views. Now we, we come from the chopper shot uh, down the straight. He was obviously moving side to side. You, you're not going to give him you know, the chance to get past you necessarily. But at this point, I suppose, is the most significant sort of shot where uh, exposes probably the room that was on the other side of the car. For sure. And, uh, you know, I have every right to run GT to the wall to give him a car width of room, which, you know, as you can see, I haven't, I haven't done that. I've stayed well within my lane. And, um, you know, the corner goes around to the right. So there's no benefit for me to go all the way to the left. Um, but, yeah, look, you know, the amount of room GT had on the left-hand side, you know, he's clearly turned into me and, uh, you know, the, the rest is yet to unfold. Yeah, and then obviously after this, once we uh, carry on rolling through it, the rest is uh, just incredible pictures of uh, the number 12 destroying itself against the fence. And from the front view, again, I suppose the, the room that was on the left-hand side is significant when the judgment was made about this. And then uh, we go in car as well and see this. So let's just talk us through what you see here. Uh, for GT, it's a little bit embarrassing, really, with him pretty much turning right into me when he had a hell of a lot of room on the left on, you know, to, to not, not to do that. So, yeah, for someone of that experience and, you know, that calibre of driver, I expect a little bit more. OK, mate. Well, um, we're so glad to see that you're OK, as they were. G uh, HRT boys, obviously, clearly happy to see you climb out of that car in the wreck and uh, um, obviously didn't want to see a, a destroyed car like that, but an amazing job to have you back here today with that car and good luck for this afternoon. No worries, thank you. Hopefully we can uh, repay the boys with a reasonable result today. Good on you. We'll be starting from 18th on the grid in this afternoon's race. I have to say, Fabian's kept a pretty cool head mm. about what transpired yesterday. <laughs> that was high speed. It was we so have. dangerous. <laughs> yeah, if that was you two, how would that have played out, do you think? Oh, I think Fair we've enough. already shown that. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I can't believe how calm he is. Like, seriously, I, I, I would have whilst down there straight out of the car. Seriously, I, I don't condone violence, but... I would have had a fair few words with him, so I think he's a little bit soft on that front, but that's a different matter. As far as the incident goes, uh, I mean, there's no doubt he didn't shift. I mean, at the end of the day... I mean, the more right. we look at it, we've looked at, yeah. you know, all of these angle, camera angles, you know, a couple of times now. The more you see it, the more it affirms that it was the mistake on Garth Tander's part. Is, is that the read on it? Well, we would have seen this, what, now, 30 or 40 times, probably? Mm. Even off-air, we've watched it plenty of times. And really, the issue is that as Fabian's going around the kink, he slightly moves to the left, but Garth has got a lot of road out to the wall. And Garth, when the in-car, has actually turned slightly into the back of the car and spun it around. So, again... We said yesterday, and we've said it again this morning, takes two to tango, but there's a lot more equity from Garth Tander's perspective than it was uh, Fabian Coulthard. OK, so we've heard from Fabian, so let's get the other side of the story now, Murph. Of Garth Tander. Garth's obviously come in to give his point of view and talk about the incident from where he stood or where he sat in his race car doing it. So we're just going to fire up the, uh, the Hino Hub here, GT, and just run us through, you know, your point of view and how all this uh, played out. Oh, look... Um We'd been nose to tail for about 20 odd laps, and Fabian was starting to lose the rear tyre. So his drive off onto the front straight was going away. Um, and then, so I, we had a bit of a rubbing coming onto the front straight. Um, I sort of got out of the gas to let him recover, and then we got back on the gas again. And then, you know, I tried to go up one side, tried to go up the other, and then ultimately got onto this to his left rear. And which you're doing, which we're going to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was sort of changing lanes a little bit. And it's hard because this court, this straight is a bit of a corner. And look, I felt like I had an, uh, some overlap. I was so focused on what Fabian was doing with the positioning of his car that I didn't realise really how much room I had on the left of my car before the concrete wall. And look, you know, there was contact, and I hate seeing cars turn around like that. I hate seeing damage like that. I hate the fact that those guys had to work all night. 
to get this car, his car repaired so they could run again tomorrow. So look, certainly the, there was some fault on my side. Um, you know, I just hate that this is how it's played out. And I know you really well, mate, and, uh, and I don't think everyone in the pit lane has a lot of respect for you. everyone's ability and your ability too. It's not your style. I know no one's suggesting intentional in any way, shape or form here, that, but I mean, there was a lot of room on the left. And the focus at 250Ks now, people have to understand, I think you'd like to say that there's a lot going on at that speed when you're approaching that curve. And So just a bit of a misread on your part on, on, your, on the spatial sort of awareness. Yeah, of look, I mean, I was... I was so heavily focused on, on the rear bumper of Fabian's and, and where he was positioning his car that I wasn't spatially aware to look how much room there was on the left side of my car. And look, there was probably another metre I could go out towards the wall. And, and I, was, I was so heavily focused on Fabian's car. I knew that he was coming across that I didn't realise I had more room to go out a bit wider and maybe, you know, avoid contact or delay the contact. So, yeah, like I said, I, I hate that this has happened. I hate that, that that car is so heavily damaged. I mean, sure, we've got a penalty, and that's that's what it is. But, you know, it's more the fact that I don't feel like I race like that. I don't, I've never raced like that. There was no intent to have a crash. Yep. Um, you know, I was just trying to get up the inside so I could pass him into turn one. We're race drivers at the end of the day, and everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to succeed. Um, thanks, GT, for giving us your point of view All on right, the whole right. one, and uh, good luck today. Thanks. Cheers. Great to hear from both drivers there over that incident. Garth Tander has changed his tune a little, though, today. After yesterday's, you know, what he's had to say then is very different to what we heard from him yesterday. I want to get your thoughts and some reaction now to what he's just said. From his point of view, he thought that Fabian Coulthard was changing lanes. Is that the way you see it? Well, I don't think it was. In fact, Garth was moving around at the back, so Russell called it yesterday, which is exactly what you do. You faint one way, so you watch this. He faints to the right, and then he faints to the left. Now, there's no overlap there. What actually creates the overlap is the side draft. So there's a little aero hole, which allowed the HRT car to gain some momentum on the Falcon. So that's why he got a little bit of a gain on that run in terms of momentum. So watch this. So as he faints right, Faints right, there's no overlap yet because he would have spun him already. Then he moves up, gets a little toe, and that little contact is the one. Now, when you watch where Fabian actually is in that lane, watch the lane, there's the lane, he's not moving in the lane. No, not at all. And, and, and look, at the end of the day, no matter what's happened to the lead up, Garth had plenty of real estate to the left. So at the end of the day, you've got to say, you know, and we yeah, wait for this one. This is also the big one. So look at the wheel. Yes, he was. He knew he was starting to spin around, so you have to turn right at some stage to avoid getting cleaned up as well. But he did it pretty early. He did it while he was in the back guard of it and pushed him around. So, look, the only thing is, Garth just has to go, hey, cop that one. That's what I did, simple as that. I do agree with Murph, though. It, it's not a trait of Garth. Mm. I, I mean, I haven't seen it. He is a hard racer, seriously hard. He'll throw it down the inside of someone like I've never seen anyone do it before. But he doesn't go out and wreck cars normally. So, yep. But this one he did, you know, simple yep. as that. But it's not a trait that he does it all the time. So we have to be a little bit balanced. Oh, I, I agree. Absolutely. And I reckon we've done a really good job there to find both those guys. Mm -hmm. I think the second part is you get to hear in Garth's voice and with the words, it wasn't my intention, you know, it wasn't purposeful, it, you know, he misread it. He, and he, he did. didn't realise there was that much road on the left. So, so look, we are at 250k, Jess, when you're blazing down there and the visibility is limited, you, you don't really know where how much road you've got sometimes, and especially because the road goes around to the right. So it's a very tough call. It's a hard business. He's pretty much said, "I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to cause a crash." But, sort of. Well, sort of. <laughs> well, he's, you know, at the end of the day, he's actually got a, he's got a penalty. Yep. So we will see Garth Tander participate in the shootout. He finished third in the timesheets in that qualifying session. And then once we know where he sits in the top 10, we will know where he will start on the grid. Uh, at worst, he could start 20th, which will be right behind Fabian Coulthard. If it transpi <laughs> transpires that stop way. It, so stop it, stop it. Hold on. That's the journo in you doing This that. is not <laughs> over yet. All right, of course, the on-track action continues here on the streets of Surface Paradise. So let's hand it over now to Chad Nalon and Dean Canto.